Blech. Let's talk about uh, Dark City, uh, which has always been just one of my go to. I have, you know, I got go to films that every, you know, uh, five years, six years, whatever, I'm like, sit down and just have a good rewatch. And um, Dark City came to the Alamo Draft House, the director's cut. And so I made sure to, to catch that. And the last time I watched it, you know, it's funny, like how you have like relationships with movies. I first saw it in 98 and then I saw and and to me, it was like I was like, oh, OK, this is interesting. I actually watched it because Richard O'Brien was in it, who I love Rocky Horror and Richard O'Brien. And um, and uh, what an amazing it's so cool. You got to work with him and stuff. And um, uh, and, you know, every once in a while I'd revisit and be like, yeah, this is cool. This is cool. But this last time I watched it, I, like was blown away. This is probably like 2018, I want to say. I was so blown away by what Dark City is. And especially when I think about like how Dark City is spiritual. There is a lot of spiritual DNA. The Matrix takes a lot of its spiritual DNA from Dark City, you know, like in the same sense of like reality and perception and, and this, that and the other. Um, and I wanted to know when you were making the movie, if the like what if this is what I pulled out of it when I was watching it. I wanted to know if this was if you were intending this when you were making the movie, um, this sort of idea about about learning the truth, learning what the truth is in life and then taking charge. Be uh, accepting it for what it is and then taking charge of it and making and and doing your best to make it so make it your own make it some make it your own happiness because i feel like that's what what's happening in dark city can you speak does that make any sense to you did you speak to that at all yeah i mean you can you can certainly interpret it that way i mean it's it really is what is the truth you know what is reality uh does it even exist you know that's the that's the the question um and that's something that i've been obsessed with all my life and I continue to be obsessed with it I, I'm, I've written this film called heaven that is uh set in a virtual afterlife and um it's it's all the same themes you know I think you, mm. you you're um you know filmmakers who have a philosophical take on life and the world um tend to just redo the same themes over and over again um even if that you know, even if it's based on other people's uh, original work that they are adapting, they tend to gravitate towards work that speaks to them on the level that they have an underlying feeling about. You know, um, so um, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm I, I don't often go back and look at my films, but I'm but I'm when I if you know I'm in a hotel room and I'm, something comes on and right. It's like the car crash. You can't look away, right? Because I always, I have a, I'm one of those guys who like, it's never finished. It's abandoned. You know, it's, it, sure. you know, I always see the bad stuff, the stuff that didn't work and rather than the good stuff, you know, but sometimes I'll watch things and I'll be struck by how I go, Hey, I've done that. Like in every other, every other movie I've made, you know, um, I go, do I actually have an original idea ever? Or am I just redoing the same stuff over and over again? You know? Um, but it is an obsession. It is something that I'm that I'm I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to find meaning, um, as I think many of us are, uh, meaning in our existence. Um, and uh, you know, that to me is is the the reason we're here is to understand why we're here, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh will we ever understand why we're here? I don't know. But um, you know, it certainly is fun exploring those ideas. So I um you know what it is to to even to even simplify it more. It's like the moment when you find that the big reveal for anybody who uh, spoilers on again on a movie that's over two decades old. There's a uh, they 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 break through the wall. They break through a wall, and it turns out that this entire time, in what should be, I don't know why, if they ever do like a top ten list of reveals, like Planet of the Apes is really just Earth the whole time. 
I feel like Dark City needs to be on that list. This this crazy sort of Kafka-esque world of night that we've been traversing through that amorphous and, you know, almost like German expressionalist to a certain extent, all of a sudden turns out to be a spaceship in outer space is just one of the biggest what the fucks like ever. And the idea that the main protagonist who could literally shape reality, he goes, okay, I'm floating through space on a spaceship in the same way that I guess when you think about earth in a way is a giant spaceship. If you, the first people, if they didn't understand what space was and they somehow had a ladder and they climbed all the way to the top, to the sky and expecting heaven. And then they just saw it was space. They would be in a similar sort of uh, scenario. And this is this idea of like, okay, th this is the world. This is what the world is. Then the world is in the same way that life is what you make it. The protagonist literally decides that he's going to make the life, that life is what he makes it. And he goes and he turns he turns his memories, his, I guess a dream, it's almost a dream, even though it's like a implanted memory, but he makes it a reality. And what is that? What a profound message for life and the lessons of life in where no matter what your circumstances are, and obviously resources and all sorts of things, logistics, everything can come into play with that. But this idea that life really is what you make it. And that's the ultimate takeaway that I have when I watch Dark City, life is what you make it. This guy is like, I'm floating in space. Okay, I'm not gonna, there's no point in trying to escape. I gotta turn around and I gotta pragmatically do something with this. And it's beautiful, man. It's Thank beautiful. you. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely the case, I think in, a, in this modern context that those themes are it, probably even more pertinent than they were back in the mid nineties when I came up with the idea for the, for the story. Um, uh, and, but today I think the interesting part of it is how social media allows mm. everyone to have their own little bubble of reality. Mm. Right. And that's being used by the corporations to divide us uh, rather than bring us together because it's to their um, adva advantage for that process to occur. Um, this is a, fundamental i mean that's a big for me a bigger much bigger fear than ai uh and how that's affected in a very negative way uh modern society and look you know the upside it all has upsides it, the you know splitting the atom had an upside as well um uh you know we can have a podcast like this due to you know social media etc um but by golly, the downside is is uh, substantial. It is. Um, now, of course, with AI, that's going to be used to weaponize um, social media as well. Obviously, very nefarious. Very nefarious. Um, so, so to me, it's the this whole quest for meaning and for truth is great if you're trying to arrive at something that really is a a truth. Um, but if you're being shepherded into uh, an an area mm -hmm. by the algorithms of this world <laughs> to embrace a reality that's a false reality, then that's of some concern because, as I say, that will divide. That will divide us. You know, it goes back like when I was a kid, everyone could agree on, you know, what was a good film and what was a bad film, right? Everyone could pretty much agree on that. Everyone could agree on what was a good political um, direction, what was a bad political direction. Today, no one can agree on anything. There's, you know, you pick anything um, that is, you know, being presented as a uh, a way of thinking, um, and you'll get an equally divided and divisive uh, audience for that for that thing, you know. Uh, and that's down to social media. There's no question that social media has created that world. You know? Um, yeah, no, that, I mean, that is, it's as you, as I was saying it, as soon as you said social media, I was like, ah, I know where he's going with this. I know where he's going with this. And you're right. It is. It's like, it's a double, like anything else, it ends up being a double-edged sword.